Hello everyone, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is video number 18 for chapter 3. We now introduce a somewhat more general method which is called variation of parameters. This is a method to find a particular solution for the second order linear non-homogeneous equation. Once the solution of the homogeneous equation is given. Okay, let's set up the situation. So we consider the second order linear equation in a more general form. So y double prime plus pt y prime plus qt equals zero. Here, p and q do not have to be constants, they can be functions of t. So it's in a more general form of a linear homogeneous equation with zero on the right hand side. And we call that equation h. And then there's the corresponding um, non-homogeneous one with the source term on the right hand side. And we call it n. So in this setting, we will introduce a method to find a particular solution for the non-homogeneous equation once the solution to the homogeneous equations are given. So before we um, proceed, I would like to comment on the difference in the setting of this discussion from the one that we have done. So the one we have done first was for constant coefficients. So these p and q's are constant, no longer functions of t. And then here it's more general. Secondly, the previous discussions we have had are restricted to a certain type of source term gt here. Namely, the terms that we can find at the form of a particular solution are of um, limited types. The types are limited to exponential functions, sine and cosine, and polynomials, and uh, combinations of them, multiply two of them together or three of them together and add up. Okay, And here we can handle a general function g of t as long as g of t is given. Okay, so now we assume that um, the general solution for the homogeneous equation is given. So let's specify. So the general solution can be written as a linear combination of two um, functions. We call it y1 and y2. And then we have the constant c1 and c2 in front. Here c1 and c2 are arbitrary constant and y1 and y2 are two linearly independent functions that both solves this uh, homogeneous equation. Okay, so the goal now is to find a particular solution to the non-homogeneous equation based on this information here. Okay, so here is the core idea of the method. So now we are going to guess a particular solution. So here's a guess for a particular solution for the non-linear equation as the follows. So we take the solution for the homogeneous problem, which is c1 y1 plus c2 y2, and c1 c2 are constants. Then what we do is we remove those two constants and replace them with two functions. Okay, so here we replace it with u1 t, and then c2 is replaced by u2 of t. So here u1 and u2 are functions. Then our goal here is to find some functions u1 and u2, there are two functions here, such that putting them in here, then this yp becomes a particular solution. Now some observations and comments. We see that in this setting we have a lot of freedom. So we'll see that there are constraints. So if we plug in yp into the non-homogeneous equation, the equation must hold. 
then this will give us one constraint. But however, here we have two functions to be determined, u1t and u2t. Okay. So two kind of unknown functions, one constraint. So this basically means that there is one constraint which can be a free choice. So I said free choice for us. You can choose it to be anything that's suitable that would make your derivation easier will allow you to find a solution. However, we should use this free choice wisely. Okay, so the goal here is to find a particular solution. So we want to use it wisely such that in the end we will get first order equations for u1 and u2 and because we know how to solve first order linear equations. Okay, let's look at the details. Okay, let's go through the details of uh, the derivation. Okay, so to begin with, we seek a particular solution of the form u1 y1 plus u2 y2. Since we're going to plug this in the equation, then we need to compute the derivative. So yp prime will be just um, product rule twice, one on each of the terms. So I will get u1 prime y1 and then u1 y1 prime. And for this term, I'll get u2 prime y2 and u2 y2 prime. So just the product rule. So don't mind the color coding yet, they'll come. Now we see that um, the equation is actually a second order equation. So we will have to compute the yp double prime. So we see if we keep this form as is and uh, we differentiate one more time, then the expression gets really complicated and gets many, many terms. Furthermore, um, the terms that are marked in red that contains u1 prime and u2 prime, if we have these terms and we differentiate them one more time, we would end up having terms with the second derivative. So this one would give me terms with u1 double prime and this one will give me terms with u2 double prime. So remember the goal here, we have a free choice we can make and the free choice shall be used wisely such that in the end we end up with constraints with only first derivative for the u1 and u2. Okay, so these terms we should avoid. Okay, so how do we avoid these terms? Okay, so we see that this is a good place to use our free choice because we see that it's very desirable to avoid the second derivatives of u1 and u2. This can be achieved if we put a constraint that these two terms add up to be zero. Okay, so y1 u1 prime plus y2 u2 prime equals zero. So that is a constraint. This is the free choice that we now have used. So let's call this constraint A. Okay, so if this is the constraint, then um, these two terms add up to be zero. Then we have yp prime will be just two terms, the two black terms. So y1 prime u1 plus y2 prime u2. And then we can differentiate this one more time, applying um, the product rule, so the yp double prime will be y1 double prime u1 and then y2 double prime u2 and then there is the term y1 prime u1 prime which is here and then y2 prime u2 prime which is here. So we have the second derivative also. And now um, it's time to put all these derivatives back into the differential equation Okay, so we plug them into the non-homogeneous equation and uh, what we have here, so this term is yp double prime and this is yp prime and this term is just our yp, okay? And uh, we get this kind of a big expression. Okay. And now we're going to work on 
um, simplification of this. Okay, so we will collect um, like terms. Um, like terms um, in, in the following sense. So let's first collect all terms that evolving u1. So I see I have one term here, and I have a u1 here, and I have a u1 here. Then I can collect its coefficients. That will be y1 double prime, and here will be p y1 prime, here will be q y1. And I collect this. Okay, so um, once I have done that, I can do the same to the u2 term. So here is u2, and then here is u2, and here is u2. These are the three u2 terms. Collecting them, taking the u2 outside, then we see we'll have um, double, y2 double prime, and then here is p y2 prime, here is q y2. Okay, so, and then there, um, there are two remaining terms here, which we just collect because um, we don't know what to do with that term yet. Now, we see that we can actually simplify a lot this expression here um, by using the fact that y1 and y2 are solutions of the homogeneous equation. Okay, so because we now observe that um, this term here is exactly the left hand side of the homogeneous equation, so that shall be zero. And then, because y1 is a solution, and then here is also the left hand side of the homogeneous equation by putting in y2, and that shall be zero as well, because y2 is a solution. Okay, and then the only term remains on the left hand side is, okay, this one in the bracket, actually two terms here. So we have y1 prime u1 prime plus y2 prime u2 prime equals gt. So this becomes the constraint we must impose on u1 and u2. So let's call this um, equation B. We now note that we now have two constraints and two unknown. The constraints are A and equation A and equation B. And we observe that both of them are linear equations and the highest order for the unknown, which is u1 and u2, um, is just u1 and u2 prime. And in fact, both equations would only contain u1 prime and u2 prime as in their unknowns. Okay, so to be clear of what I meant, let's um, collect um, the equation a and b and repeat them here. So here's equation a and here is equation b. Okay, equation a is our free choice after we have made our free choice and then we end up with this equation b. Okay, so u1 prime, u2 prime are the two unknowns of these two equations. Then we can choose to write this in matrix vector form. So the unknown vector is u1 prime and u2 prime put it in a vector, then the coefficient matrix we can collect are just coefficients in front of them. So y1, y2, that's the first row, and that's coming from equation A, and with 0 on the right hand side. And then equation B will have y1 prime, y2 prime as the coefficient in front of u1 prime, u2 prime, so we collect here, and then the right hand side is g, t. So basically, we need to solve this system um, with the u1 prime, u2 prime as our unknown because uh, y1 and y2 are given. Therefore, y1 prime and y2 prime, they're also given. So we need to analyze the existence of solution for this system and the uniqueness because it's a a matrix time a vector equal to a vector, so there are constraints on this matrix that will guarantee a unique solution. Okay, namely that the determinant of this um, matrix shall be non-zero. So what is the determinant of this matrix here? We see that that is exactly the Voronskian of y1 and y2, right? 
and the y1 and y2 are two linearly independent um, solutions. They are linearly independent functions of each other and therefore the Boronskian is never zero. So this guarantees that we can find a unique solution for u1 prime and u2 prime. In fact, one can easily find the inverse matrix of this one here, which is this matrix is 1 over the Voronskian, which is the determinant, and then um, this matrix, um, which um, is obtained, actually there is a trick to obtaining that one. Um, you can reverse the diagonal, so flip the y2 prime here and y1 here, and then the off diagonal turn them into negative. Okay. You can easily verify by doing a matrix product with this one times that and you will obtain the identity matrix. Okay, and then the solution for this vector is this inverse matrix times the load vector. Okay, so now we can even carry out this matrix vector product here to write out exactly what is u1 prime and u2 prime. And we see it actually um, is rather simple thanks to the zero term here. So when you do the product, this one, product that, you see the y2 prime term is multiplied by zero. So u1 prime is only this times that, of course times that. So that is the u1 prime, it's a function of t. And then the same for u2 prime here is this vector dot this vector and then we get only y1 times g, y1 times g and with 1 over w in the front. Okay, so we have solved this and we find the function u1 of t, or u1 prime of t and u2 prime of t. So once the u1 prime and u2 primes are obtained, then we can recover the function u1 and u2 by integrating. So u1 would be the integral of uh, u1 prime, which is written here, and I pour the negative sign out. And then u2 is the integral of the u2 prime, which I put here. Okay, so once you have found u1 and u2, then you can put back in into the form to get a particular solution. So the particular solution is u1 y1 plus u2 y2. And then we can put in the expression of u1 here, and then the expression of u2 here. Let's give some remarks. So the first remark is that Okay, so for a general second order linear equation, finding the general solution is not a trivial task. Okay. So in, if the coefficients are not constant but are functions, we so far do not have a general algorithm to do that. However, if by any luck one can find one solution for the homogeneous equation, let's call it y1, then we can proceed. That is, um, we can find the second solution y2 by the reduction of order method which we have learned. And then once that's found, then we have y1, y2, and then we have a general solution for h then we can use the method we just learned here, variation of parameter, and we can find a particular solution for the non-homogeneous equation, and then together we can form the general solution for the non-homogeneous equation. Okay, so um, keep in mind the formula in equation C, because that actually explicitly give you the solution form for the particular solution. Um, in the next video, we'll go through um, a couple of examples to see how details can be worked out. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, I'll see you next time.